Hi, my name is Johan Kraft. I'm the founder and CEO of Persepio, a company based in Sweden that develops the Tracealizer family of runtime diagnostics tools for embedded and Linux-based software systems. Tracealizer provides a market-leading visualization system that makes it a lot easier to understand and overview traces from complex software systems. Our users, companies such as Saab and ABB, get some unprecedented insight into the runtime world, which gives them better ability to deliver quality software products in time and within budget. We are now introducing Tracealizer for two Wind River operating systems, Wind River Linux and Wind River VxWorks. They visualize data generated by the existing Wind River monitoring in these platforms. But compared to the existing visualization tools in Wind River Workbench, our new Tracealizer products gives a new level of understanding that we will demonstrate in this video. First, let's have a look at Wind River's existing tool, System Viewer, a part of Wind River Workbench. System Viewer visualizes task scheduling, interrupts, and other system events using a traditional visualization where each task is represented by a horizontal line and context switches are shown using vertical lines. Events such as system calls are represented as icons. There are some drawbacks with this approach. There are many types of system calls, so you, you need to remember a lot of different icons. Moreover, when there are many tasks, you need to scroll both vertically and horizontally to follow the trace. And when zooming out a bit, the vertical lines that indicate context switches tells the dominating view and makes it harder to understand. Now, let's have a look at the same trace in Tracealizer, in this case, Tracealizer for VxWorks. In contrast to other trace visualization tools, Tracealizer uses a vertical timeline where tasks and interrupts are shown as colored rectangles. Each rectangle or fragment represents an interval of uninterrupted execution. The colors are by default selected from a color scale based on the task priority, where red is used to indicate the highest priority. The visualization works very well also when zooming out, as it naturally transforms from a detailed view when zoomed in into an overview when zooming out. And the zoom is smoothly animated to make it easier to follow. And when zooming in, you can easily select the desired interval but just by selecting an area with the mouse cursor. This selection can be used for several other purposes as well. The vertical timeline allows us to show events using horizontal text labels instead of icons. The events to show can be selected in the view filter in the lower right. This filter is very powerful as it allows you to combine two aspects of each, each event the kernel services called, and the kernel object referenced. So by selecting, for instance, semtake and a particular semaphore, only such events are shown. If we clear the kernel object category, all semtakes operations are then shown. You can also configure the view filter by right-clicking on a particular event. The event labels have different color depending on the type and status of each operation. Blocking kernel calls are shown in red, and the corresponding resume of the task when the blocking ends is shown in green. You can easily find the point where the blocking operation resumes, or vice versa, by right-clicking on the label. By clicking on a fragment, you see additional information about the task or interrupt in the upper right view, actor information. We use the term actor to denote any type of executable thread, tasks or interrupts. The actor information view is a tree structure with different kinds of information, for instance statistics regarding the execution time and response time of the actor. By clicking on extreme values, Tracealizer automatically finds and highlights the corresponding actor instance, which makes it easier to find interesting parts of the trace. More advanced searches are possible using the Finder dialog, which offers filters for related to task timing properties and also allows you to search for kernel service calls and custom user events. Tracealizer offers several visualization modes 
that lets you select how to render the execution. This is the merged view mode, and it shows all activity within a particular core in a single column, but with indents to indicate scheduling and preemptions. This view mode gives the best sense of execution order and is a more compact representation, which is good when there are many tasks in multiple cores. In Gantt view mode, each task and interrupt have a separate column, which makes it easier to see patterns and any deviations from typical patterns. The flat mode is intended for systems with many cores. It gives a very compact visualization by disabling the indentation. The vertical trace view is supported by several additional views, more than 20 in total. Several of these are other timeline views shown horizontally such as CPU load graph, kernel blocking times, kernel object utilization. All horizontal views can be shown on a common timeline and are easily correlated with the trace view. The position of the main trace view is indicated by an outlined rectangle and there, are, there is also a horizontal trace view that can be included. The communication flow graph shows the communication between different tasks and interrupt through kernel services and kernel objects such as, such as message queues and semaphores. Clicking on any node in this graph shows a list of more information in the right and double clicking on the nodes opens up a, a list of all events related to the object. For message queues, for instance, we can see all the individual messages buffered in the queue over time and find the point where individual messages are sent and received. This allows for following the data flow between tasks, for instance, when analyzing chains on related task instances. The statistics report shows a summary of timing statistics on task and instance level. Like in the actor information view, you can click on extreme values in order to quickly find interesting places in the trace. The statistics report also show the distribution of execution times, response times, and other timing properties in the form of histograms. These histograms are also linked to the trace, so by clicking on one of the vertical bars, the Finder dialog is configured to match the selection and automatically highlights the first matching instance. We have now seen most of the trace analyzer functionality demonstrated using a VxWorks example. In this final section, we will have a look at the specifics of Traceializer for WinDriver Linux. WinDriver Linux uses the LTTNG tracing framework and converts these traces to the system viewer format. Traceializer, however, reads the native LTTNG traces directly, which means that we can utilize the full potential of the very powerful LTTNG framework. Traceializer also supports the new generation LTTNG version 2.x that produces data in the common trace format. Both the kernel tracer and the LTTNG user space tracer are supported. As you can see, the visualization is essentially identical in the Linux version, although we have a different set of kernel services and kernel object types. Syscall events such as IO, FUTEX, and socket operations are included by default, and by adding custom instrumentation in your system, you can visualize any event or library calls you like. The Linux version offers the same supporting views as other traceializer versions, such as CPU load and the communication flow graph. For more information and to download a time-limited but fully functional evaluation version, please visit Persepio.com. Thank you for listening.